Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiryFantasyArt.com and I've already covered the tools on the left hand side and all their various functions. I'm going to go briefly through some additional options which are available through uh, this menu, drop down menu. So if I click down on the file drop down menu, as you can see I have a lot of different options, but in general, you're probably only going to use a couple of these. Uh, so I'm going to show you the ones that you need to be aware of, especially if uh, you're doing a lot of video editing and all that. Uh, first and foremost, I want to show you that my mode setting is actually set to CMYK color. And I do this for, once again, for printing purposes specifically. If you're doing mostly online graphics or anything related to that, you want to save it as RGB color instead and RGB does give you a lot more options that are specific to that. So if I go in my Save As here and I click my drop down menu, you can see I have actually only a couple of options within this. Um, so I have my basic options, so I can save this as a JPEG, uh, a Photoshop file, a TIFF, um, but there's far less options that are made available to me in comparison to if I change this to RGB. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that. Uh, I'm going to choose not to merge all the information. Uh, so now if I hit Save As, I have uh, quite a few more options that have been opened up. I can save it as a PNG. Uh, that's really useful if you're saving a file that has to have transparencies, especially for online stuff. Um, there's syntax, there's a bunch more op options here. So if you're wondering why uh, your option that you're looking for is not showing up, it's probably because it's saved as CMYK. So it's going to save files for specific uses um, for that. And RGB does have its own specific uses and that's why uh, you have different file formats that are made available to you. I'm just going to change this back to uh, CMYK by going back in my history. Now, a very important feature is Save for Web and Devices. So this is really good for optimizing your image for um, being viewable on the web. Uh, I do recommend you get familiar. Now, this error appeared because um, my file size currently is extremely large because it's set up for printing. Uh, so I'm going to hit No right now and I'm going to change those settings. Uh, you can see I have it set to 300 dpi and it's a uh, 11 by 18 inches essentially. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 8.5 which is obviously significantly smaller and I'm going to change this to 72. Okay, so my image now, it looks fine on the screen. Uh, it's a little bit pixelated right now. And that's because I've changed, uh, drastically changed the settings for this. So I'm going to save this for web and devices. Now I do have a web optimize uh, save here uh, and a PNG file save. There are some default ones. Uh, what you want to be mainly aware of is the fact that, first of all, you can zoom into these four windows and it shows you what the difference in the quality is. And right now I have my quality set to 45, which is essentially close to a medium setting. If I choose high, you're going to see that obviously this information is uh, much more detailed now, closer to the original. Um, you can also check in the bottom of each of these, you'll notice that there's also the file size that would result. So as you go further down, there's more degradation in the final product. So that's something you want to uh, watch out for. It was originally set to medium, so I'm going to put it back to medium. Um, and the default setting for medium is uh, 30. I can move this scroller though to increase the quality and as a result it increases the file size in the window that I have currently selected. Now by increasing the blur I'm able to get a bit more information to show. Uh, essentially it 
blurs out uh, the pixels. So you, I generally use 0 0.2. I find that's the best setting for my illustrations. Um, I always choose optimize, uh, convert, and it's set to uh, copyright and contact info. Uh, and most of these are essentially uh, the default settings that I've started off with. The main things I've changed are the quality and the blur. So the image height, I can change the image height and pixels and percentages as well. So I have all those options available to me. Uh, now, right now it's set, if you look up on the top here, um, I do have it set to uh, four previews. So it shows me slowly what it would look like if I decrease the quality as I go. I have also uh, option just to go with the two, just the optimized or just the original. So I'm going to go back to four since this one's better in general for my purposes. So I tend to stay with that. Uh, you could choose to cut out and slice uh, certain portions that you want to make into hot uh, links for the for the internet. Uh, you can zoom in. Um, you can also eyedropper, and uh, you could toggle between the the slices visibility. So I do recommend that you actually uh, get used to this if you are posting a lot of information online. There's a lot of added benefits by doing this. Uh, the main one, obviously, is that you're not posting images online that will take forever to load. Even with a powerful computer, it doesn't really matter how powerful your computer is, if the image takes a long time, chances are that person is going to click away. So for this reason alone, uh, you may want to consider optimizing your images uh, for online websites. So I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want to save this right now. And Obviously the import is very important. I generally, when my scanner is plugged in, I will go to uh, We Support. So my scanner is now on, so it should pop up in here. Um, I recommend you turn off uh, Create Unique Subfolder. Uh, it tends to create a new folder every time you want to scan, so that's I generally like to browse where I want mine. So I'm just going to uh, hit Start. And obviously, I can choose my printer. And if I go to properties, I can change some of the information here as well. I'm just going to hit OK. Um, the nice thing is that you can change this easily to black, grayscale, or color. I tend to use my own customized setting. So if I click on here and I click this, then I can modify the brightness and contrast and change whether or not it's color and the resolution as well. That's really useful. Okay, so if I click preview, uh, the scanner is going to take a little bit of time to warm up uh, prior to scanning. And as you can see, uh, this is my scan for that eye tutorial I did a while back. And if I want to keep this, then I could just choose scan. So I'm not going to do that in this case. Uh, so for the file drop-down menu, that's the main features that I use on essentially a daily basis. So I do recommend you get at least familiar with those options. You can dwell further if you want, because uh, obviously there's uh, quite a bit of options here. Um, I find that using the place option is especially useful in Illustrator. Uh, that's generally the proper method to use when you want to put an image into something that's going to be printed via Illustrator. Um, one more thing that you may want to do is, uh, or keep in mind, is that you can export uh, files as well. Um, I personally don't use this, I just uh, normally use Save As or to save for web devices anyway, but it may be something you want to get familiar with as well. So that's it for this week's tutorial, and I hope to see you guys soon. So thank you and take care.